roller, no problem. Um, you can go ahead and roll up. This is a foam roller. You can go ahead and roll up your yoga mat or grab a rolled up towel and that will totally suffice. And this is wonderful if you've been on a device. So when we're on devices, we tend to have this real kind of scoop pelvis. If we're standing, we might also be jutting our pelvis back to try to counterbalance, locking our knees, okay? Or getting our pelvis underneath us and just slumping our whole body forward, knees forward. So anytime something moves forward, something has to move back in our body. So this helps to open our upper back, get more mobility into our shoulders, get our cranium the back of our skull aligned over our shoulder blades so that we don't have such forward neck posture. Okay, And it, it will also be helpful to your pelvis. So even though we're focusing on the upper back, everything is interconnected. And that's the magic of tensegrity. Okay. So if you um, follow me on Facebook, you know, I've been talking a lot about tensegrity lately and it's a wonderful way. Um, to just remember and learn about the push and pulls not only within our body, but within our emotional and mental life as well. So if you have a foam roller, you'll join me here. If you have a towel, you'll need to make some adjustments and I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's support the back of our head, bring your elbows in and bring that foam roller really low on your back. So your bottom is supported, feet are to the ground, knees are bent, and you're just going to lay back a little bit and come on up. So your lowest floating ribs are supported here. We'll do this three times. Then you'll move an inch down on the mat, okay? We'll repeat that three times. So if you have a towel, you're not going to roll as smoothly. You'll need to actually like pick yourself up and adjust yourself down the mat, but still get the benefits. So dropping back three times, moving about an inch or so up. And as I move up, I can generally go farther back and then there'll be a point kind of where I'm restricted, usually around where my shoulder blades start, start to come into play. Oh, that feels so good. I hope it feels good to you too. All right, rolling down and then I'm right at where my thoracic spine and my cervical spine interconnect. So now I'm going to repeat that. And going down an inch, three times, lift and lower. And I'm not pulling with my arms. In fact, I'm actually keeping my head pressing back into my hands here. So I'm not enforcing any of that forward head. I have pressure integrity by keeping the pressure of the back of my head into my hands. Hmm. I've been doing a lot of asymmetrical lifting lately. This feels really good. Mm, okay. And last one, just getting down as far as you can there. And you might notice this gives you a little bit of core work too. It's harder for me to talk when I'm low. All right. So you can just give yourself a little roll up and down again. Okay. So we'll do a few more moves here. Now we'll take that foam roller or the rolled towel or your rolled yoga mat and you'll bring your um, sacrum up onto it. So stabilize with your feet so you don't roll off and your whole spine will now be supported by whatever device you're laying upon. So this gives you good biofeedback. The back of your skull, scapula and your sacrum are all connected here. Now I'm going to just do some angel wings arms so letting my hands come down to the side if this is too much for you you might just stay here and let these tissues start to open our chest can get really really tight for so many reasons so let this be an opportunity for you to really check in with your system okay not just your physical system but your nervous system does this feel um anxiety provoking is this overwhelming i can take a moment and breathe here Come back, let my system regulate, all right? And then you can follow along with me. And at any point you need to stop and readdress your breath, go ahead and do so. So for me, I had rotator cuff surgery in 2017. And I notice even still here almost five years later that there is just a little more resistance in my right shoulder than my left. 
And so I'm just noticing that. And you might have a place that has a little more resistance as you sweep your arms up and overhead and back down. Now coordinate with your breath. If you haven't been already, inhale as you sweep your arms up and then let your arms trace your exhale all the way down. So you might need to let your exhale go a little bit longer than what it has been doing. And this is a great thing to remember too. If we are in that place of anxiety, stress, overwhelm to really come into a long exhale. And it might be something we have to really kind of force and try to man and manage for the first couple of rounds. But as our system catches up around that, then we'll start to decompress that mental tension. Okay. Next time your hands come down, we're going to move into some alternate arm lifts. The left arm will come up, right arm will stay down and swap. And you can begin to roll your head as you do this, rolling your head to the opposite side of the arm that's lifting. Arm lifted, hold your head there and bring that arm down. You might feel a nice additional opening into the side of your neck. Oh, I'm loving that in my trap. Center your head as you lift your other arm, look to the opposite side, keep your head there and then lower that arm. So my head is looking to the right, my left arm just lowered. Head goes to center, right arm lifts. I look to the left, keep my head left, lower my right arm. Mm. This is some really good medicine. Okay, let's just do the one or two more times on each side. Again, follow your breath, inhale to lift, and exhale to lower. And give yourself time. So when we work into this area, we're getting into the scalenes, the little stabilizing muscles of our neck. And I notice in people that have more of that forward head posture I was describing that they tend to be really wiry, like little guitar strings. Okay. And the relationship between upper back and neck is so braided. Okay, so come on back to center and we'll roll off to the side. Now you'll take the foam roller and you're gonna be on your side, have that foam roller supporting your top leg. So um, just depending on your body, if you're a little wider through the bones of your hip, you might add a blanket or an extra pillow here. I want your ankle at the same level as your knee though in those close to the same level of your hip joint. So my hip joint is not out here, my hip joint is in here. So you can take two or three fingers to kind of measure into where that actual insertion is, okay? Now, I'm gonna curl my bottom un arm under to support my head if I have a lot of neck tension. So you could fall into this category or reach your arm out if you wanna get a little stretch into your neck. Just gauge that effort for yourself. Okay, one last point here, stay with me. If you are really tender in your low back, if you know that that's a place that you tend to feel tweaky, bring your knee up higher, okay? So we're kind of pinning off that low back. This is also true if you are someone who always wants to like kind of crank and snap and pin your low back. Let's use this technique here and we'll bring that top hand behind our head. Elbows will come together. And as you inhale, roll yourself open. This is thoracic twist and exhale elbows together. You can close your eyes if you're comfortable and let this become a bit of a massage. Follow your breath. Let's go five to 10 times working within your own rhythm. Speed is not going to give you any additional benefit here. In fact, I encourage you to go slower than you are inclined to go so that you can really sense into those places that wanna be hidden by the speed, speed hides need. All right, let's go with one more here. You can always come back to this, watch this video again, and we'll come back onto our side and flip on over. So I'll go this way just so I'm still facing you. You can just roll onto the other side, left side down. 
Knee comes up, have your knee again in alignment with your hip, an ankle aligned. If you want to support that low back more, tuck your knee up, okay? Add that blanket or pillow if you need to adjust for hip width. So supporting under your head, or again, you could reach that arm out depending on what's better for you. Opposite hand, in this case, my right hand comes behind my head. Draw elbows together, and then follow an inhale, rolling open thoracic rotation, and exhale, coming down. So all of this is heart space work. Like this is great physical therapy-based yoga. We're getting wonderful benefits throughout the structure of our body. But as we're working and really striving to coordinate the breath and letting that breath become long, we're also addressing heart space. And in this amazing matrix of our heart space, it's 360 degrees. It's not just, oh, what am I extending my heart out to? Who am I extending my heart out to? But it's also how much we're bringing our heart mind into ourselves. And the truth is we can really only extend our heart out as far as we can extend it within ourselves. So the more that we know ourselves, the more that we express and practice self-love, the more that that can be a mirror of what we're putting out into the world. Okay, let's finish that. You can slide that roller off to the side for right now. And let's just come on up for some good old cat and cows. So stay stable, draw your abdominals in at your low back. And we'll draw our shoulder blades together. So it's a little different than a traditional cat cow. I want you to focus on upper back. So draw your shoulder blades together. Now lift your sternum forward so that you're getting long in your front center. It's almost like when you were lying back on that foam roller. We're just in a different relationship with gravity. Now let your shoulders go broad and head descends. Mm. Okay, shoulder blades come together. And there will be some subtle movement in your low back as you do this, but just really please focus on the upper back. Press the ground away, upper back lifts to the sky. So some bonus points here. As you draw those shoulder blades together, really press your hands down into the ground, like the inner creases of your elbows face each other. And when your shoulder blades come apart, rotate the creases of your elbows forward Press your hands down and slightly rotate right hand to the right and left hand to the left. Okay, let's do one more. Great. I'm coming back up to center. And back and take a moment here. You can rest one hand onto your heart followed by the other hand. And just notice this container of your inner landscape. So we did some work to open up our body, all these outer layers of tissue and fascia, but all the while our breath is working in this inner landscape. And just notice these contours. And letting your breath become circular, inhale. Right at the peak of your inhale, start to exhale. Your breath is just tracing around a moon or a sun. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope you feel served by this and you can always come back and I'm here for you. And one other um, invitation I would love to extend to you is um, that I'm co-hosting a full moon women's circle with Gina Ebeling. And that is going to be online via Zoom Saturday night, 6 p.m. I'll be leading a full moon meditation for that. You're welcome to come. Please share with your friends and Gina will be leading a um, kind of journaling circle, a heart centered journaling circle after that. 
Well, so much love to all of you. Thank you so much for all of you that showed up live. It's really great to see you. And I hope you have a most wonderful, wonderful day.